This video is brought to you by Gamefly.com. You can rent 8,000 new releases and classics on most major systems, all delivered right to your mailbox. If you use this URL to sign up for a free 30-day trial, you can test out their service and help support my channel. The link is in the description, so go check it out. Today, we'll be taking a look at Mirror's Edge Catalyst on the Potato Masher Pro. If you don't know, the Potato Masher Pro is a roughly $450 PC that's a side project to the main Potato Masher series. I drop a GTX 1060 into the Masher and compare it against the PS4 Pro. Not to pick on consoles, but to show you what's possible with a budget PC. You should also check out the main test of the game on the Potato Masher. Okay, let's get to it. First things first, there's no PS4 Pro patch for Mirror's Edge Catalyst at the time of this video, nor has one been announced. So why am I testing on the Potato Masher Pro? Well, that's the beauty of PCs. There are no official hardware generations, and in almost every case, you don't need developers to update games for your specific hardware. If you have better hardware, you can get a better experience. So today I'm going to compare the Potato Masher Pro to the regular Potato Masher. I'm still sorting out exactly how I'm going to order Potato Masher Pro videos, so I appreciate you sticking with me through the growing pains. The main focus of this series is still on the best 1080p experience because that's what most of you preferred and I don't have the ability to do equal quality recordings at 4K for the PS4 Pro and PC yet. But the best 1080p experience can be accomplished a few different ways. Up first, this isn't much of a surprise, but the Masher Pro is just fine at native 1080p, very high settings, and 60fps. Much like with the regular Masher and the PS4, the Masher Pro does have a few FPS drops. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is hard on CPUs, so you'll notice a few drops into the mid-50s. The overall experience is great though, so these don't bother me much as long as they aren't sustained. The overall image quality is definitely better than the Masher at 1080p, but many of my complaints still apply. The image is softer than I'd like, and there's more aliasing than I'd prefer, without the ability to adjust anti-aliasing separately from the other settings. So while 1080p looks good on the Masher Pro, we're going to move on. In my opinion, the best 1080p experience in this game is native 1440p, high settings, and 60fps. So if you're curious how you can play that at 1080p, uh, this is using super sampling using NVIDIA's Dynamic Super Resolution. So 1440p is on the left, and the masher is on the right at the 1080p settings I used in its video. While there still is a surprising amount of aliasing and the image isn't as pin sharp as I'd like it to be, it's a big improvement over the masher. The game now definitely looks really good, and it runs quite well. Compared to the masher, the shadows and textures are massively improved, while lighting and ambient occlusion have small bumps. This is a really noticeable upgrade over the base masher, plain and simple. I don't want to just breeze through this section because that doesn't give you enough time to really see the differences, so here are some more comparisons and I'll pick it back up again in a minute. While a great 1080p experience is my focus, we're going to see what else the Basher Pro can do. At 1440p in medium settings, without VSync, the Masher averaged 70 to 100 FPS. The CPU is getting beaten so hard it really can't run much faster than that. Dropping to 75% resolution scaling, it can now manage about 75 to 130 FPS, so that might be good enough for a 1440p 144Hz G-Sync monitor. It's CPU bound, so the GPU would be capable of a much more consistent high frame rate if the CPU could keep up. It's still miles above the PS4 Pro's resolution and frame rate capability for this game, but it's always disappointing when the Masher or Masher Pro doesn't just crush a game. 
I would say at 1440p and 144 hertz, the experience would be acceptable with the Master Pro, but it's far from ideal. Now, I know you're here to see if the Master Pro can play Mirror's Edge Catalyst at 4K, so I'll stop wasting your time. Let's take a look at that now. While the PS4 Pro has been marketed as an entry-level 4K gaming machine, most of the games have not actually been played at 4K. In the Master Pro launch video, I said that I consider the PS4 Pro and the Master Pro to be very capable 1080p machines that are also capable of delivering good experiences on 4K screens, even if that isn't always at native resolution. I'm considering doing a video in the near future running through how resolution scaling matters less on a 4K screen than at 1080p, because I've been gaming on a 4K screen for over two years now, and modern games are better than ever at using scaling tricks to deliver a great experience without sacrificing much in the way of visuals. Still, I know some of you really do want to see if the Master Pro can game at native 4K, so here you go. At native 4K and low settings, the Master Pro stays between 42 and 60 FPS depending on the scenario. It's very crisp, and low settings still do look pretty respectable in Mirror's Edge, providing you aren't limited by your VRAM, which is how the original Masher ended up with such nasty shadow resolution. Some people aren't bothered by variable frame rates, and some other people have variable refresh rate screens, so this wouldn't bother them at all. However, I prefer a locked 30 or 60 FPS most of the time. Obviously, the Masher Pro could lock at 30, but we want the best experience we can get, and in my opinion, for the Masher Pro, that means the same medium settings I used for the regular Masher at 1080p, which you can see on screen now, and the only differences are I'm using 4K resolution and 75% resolution scaling. Here's the Masher at native 4K and low settings, and here's medium at 75% resolution scaling. The difference in aliasing shimmer and overall detail is less than you might think. It's still much higher resolution than 1440p or 1080p while not being full 4K. More importantly, the Master Pro can maintain this combination of settings at a very reliable 60 FPS. There are still the few FPS drops we've seen on all the other combinations of settings and platforms, but by and large, it's stable, just not rock solid. This is a good 4K experience, and in my opinion, the higher settings and 60 FPS make this look better than native 4K at low settings. If I was playing this game with the Master Pro and my goal was 4K, this is what I'd do. Here are some more comparisons, then we'll conclude. Mirror's Edge Catalyst doesn't scale to the Master Pro's better GPU quite as well as I was hoping it would, but since the CPU is getting used so much, that's understandable. This is still a budget machine, of course, but I'm happy with how it performed. It's a big improvement over the regular Masher, and it does deliver what I'd consider to be a good 4K experience. The game looks pretty decent at lower settings and resolutions, but it really shines at 1440p and above, with some scenes looking truly spectacular. I'm not calling this an actual comparison win for the Master Pro because there isn't a PS4 Pro version to compare it to. Still, the Master Pro performs very well. Check out Mirror's Edge Catalyst on the regular Potato Masher if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting this channel and the Potato Masher project by tossing me a few bucks on Patreon or hit the like button. Thank you for your support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.